Hi there, biology students. It's Mr. Howard and Mr. Buss here. Howdy. We're going to walk through the lynx eats a hare population density simulation. So here's a snowshoe hare and here's a Canadian lynx. Those are the two organisms we're going to be modeling during this simulation. Once you get the lynx eats the hare, it's a topic 8A lab. Once you get that pulled up, uh, you can either send it to Notability, that's probably the preferred place. Uh, we want you to look through the introduction, we're going to go through some of the materials for you today, talk about preparation and the procedures that you'll need to follow. A few items that you'll need for this lab, uh, you'll need a scratch piece of paper, uh, something to write with, you'll need one baggie here of our links, and we got our certain number of snowshoe hairs which you might have to come get extras if you don't have enough. We'll have some of those supplied in the front of the room for you. Uh, you may need a ruler measuring uh, in inches, and you have to have some tape to measure out a one foot by one foot or 12 inch by 12 inch square area. That's gonna represent the habitat for this lab. So most of you will walk in, you'll have this habitat all set to go, and then uh, you'll be ready to participate in the simulation by using the lynx and the hares. So we'll get rid of some of this other stuff that we don't need currently. All right, so we're just going to walk through the procedure and take a few minutes to do that uh, so you can visualize it. <clears throat> so to begin the simulation, step one just says uh, equally distribute three hairs on the habitat. And then step two is just tossing the links onto the square in an effort to land on any portion. And something too uh, that's important is equally space these out each time it says to do that within the instructions and make sure you spread them out between each toss. All right, any hair that the lynx lands on becomes prey and is eaten. And then in order to survive and reproduce, the lynx must eat at least three hairs when tossed. So um, round one is over. We can record that data in the data table that the lynx ate one hair. And then, and then so basically the number of lynx uh, was one. We had one tossed and then there were three hairs to begin with. Uh, only one was eaten, so two remained. The lynx starved because it didn't eat three. So there's zero lynx that survive and therefore there's no lynx offspring. All right, so now to start round two, uh, we use the same uh, steps and the hair population doubles between each generation. So if we have two, then we now double it to four. And then even though the lynx starved, a new lynx uh, enters the habitat and uh, is going to then uh, see how many it uh, can eat this time. So now I have four hairs distributed, go ahead and toss the lynx, eats one hair, and then record that for round two. All right, so again, we had uh, one lynx, four hairs, one was eaten, three remained, uh, and, and then the lynx starved. All right, and then just kind of continue on. Basically, uh, next round, round three, we're going to double the hairs again, so we have three remaining, so that doubles to six. And we'll say, show you here uh, visually what that looks like on the data table. So we're going to get our six dispersed in here, so then we'll look at number of hairs that we start with. We're going to make sure we put down six before we start. Uh, another lynx moved in from a neighboring habitat, so we'll change that to one, uh, and then we'll run the simulation again. All right. All right, so then five hairs remained. We're going to double that to 10, equally distributed on the habitat. Lynx eats one hair, the lynx starves. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hairs. So nine doubles to 18. Okay, so here we are in round five where we have one lynx again still, but 18 hairs. And so we'll see if the lynx will survive this time. So you can see this lynx captured or touching these three hairs. It doesn't have to be fully over the top, just barely touching. So this one, the lynx successfully survived. It caught three hairs. All right, so hairs eaten three, uh, hairs remaining, so three and uh, 18 is 15. Uh, lynx starved zero, lynx surviving one. This time there will be a lynx offspring because one survived. And so here we go for the next round. We had 15 hairs remaining. So this time we're gonna set up 30 and we're gonna have two lynx total. And for those two lynx, we'll use the same card. We'll just throw it two separate times. And if you get two multiple lynx, this is the point where you'd wanna Potentially use scratch paper to write down uh, the first throw, how many links that individual 
uh, captured. And then the second throw, uh, same thing, reflecting how many that individual links captured. So we'll have to count out the 30 hairs and get them organized on here. Okay, so here are 30 hairs are set and we have two links to hunt this time. Here's how this works. All right, so links number one catches four hairs. Leave the uh, remaining population set. And so at this point, you see that a lynx landed here and ate the hares. These lynx are hypothetically hunting at the same time, so they're not going to have time to redistribute. So we'll do our second lynx throw uh, in an area that has highly populated hares. Throw that on there, and again, any of the hares that they're touching become part of this collection. In this case, lynx number two collected one, two, three, four, five, six hairs. So each one of these links, uh, links number one caught four hairs, it's gonna make one lynx offspring. Links number two caught six, that's gonna be two for that lynx. Uh, so we wanna calculate those totals onto our data sheet and then reset for the next population. All right, so here's this what uh, for us in our example round seven would look like. This time we have uh, four links because we had two last time and then uh, two offspring, so four. And then we have 40 hairs this time because 20 survived after the last round. And um, we're not going to run through the whole rest of the simulation because by now I think you understand the process, how it works. You're going to do 20 total rounds. If you ever get to the point where all the hairs, for, for whatever reason, are eaten, then it's just start just like you would with uh, three as you did in generation one where you have one links and three hairs. Um, but you're going to continue uh, collecting the data. You'll create a XY scatter plot. Uh, with, we'll give you some instructions on how to do that and then answer some questions at the end. So you have two days to do this lab. It'll probably take um, a good day and a half to be complete and um, submit it when you're all done. Thank you.